Hi, it's CJ again, and I want to answer some of your questions about how the container would be anchored and some structural pictures can can really show you that it'll be anchored permanently or it can be unscrewed and you know it can be moved and placed somewhere else. So these are these are the piles. And they're adjustable. There's a lot of possibilities. You can weld the container to it or they can snap into place. You know, containers are kind of made to lock together. So depending on the soil, you're going to want to go really deep with sand and, you know, if it's gravel, it's it's kind of a different screw. Um, it's a screw pile. And, you know, if it's clay, then you give it some extra clearance so that when the clay swells and your house doesn't move. So this is a container with the corrugated steel removed and this is what I picture would be built in the factory and the walls would be filled in you know like an automobile it would have um, walls that um, open kind of like a Tesla they go up and they're covered in a solar fabric and it collects rainwater and it closes at night and the possibilities are really amazing so it can raise itself it can have decks that fold down you know it can have the double fold like I was telling you and and that makes it solid enough that it could just be placed on a barge and you know it's a houseboat um, or a backyard condo you know an Airbnb in your backyard something as simple as this you know and it can be as amazing as as this hundreds of people have built homes out of containers you know recycling containers and and the, it's a lot of work a tremendous amount of work so if they're built in a factory like an automobile and all the parts are assembled and delivered in one box it'll save a fortune it makes a lot of things possible you know property in some places is worth a million dollars so you could have an additional dwelling unit an ADU in your backyard and you can rent it or it could be a home office or it could be your son's home and he can bring it to college with him and we could set up communes on empty land there's plenty of land it doesn't have to be connected to water sewer or electricity because this is this is completely off-grid and so if we were to build a yurt you know I imagine that would be the common living area and we would have containers just sticking out like a star you know you, you back it right up to the yurt and you live there for 
six months or a year and then you move and you live with different people you know maybe it's a startup maybe it's you know a different than a dorm you know um, but you can bring it with you you know and and I don't think we actually need a lot of living space we just need something that's really cozy and comfy like a car and so if we could use better building materials like fabric and tempered glass and you know all of this stuff can get cheaper and cheaper every year because we could buy millions of them and we could finance them you know they're secure like an automobile so that you know the banks can salvage whatever their loss is and repo it and take it away and sell it so I hope Millennials haven't lost all faith there are a lot of options and I think a container condo if it was done really well you know if Apple made a really nice pod then you would have a whole new market and I think the problem is trusting that it's going to get delivered you know if you buy something for a hundred thousand dollars how do you know it's going to get delivered and so it it needs it needs backing and it needs it needs to be developed it needs to be developed but there are a lot of funds available to build new cities and the UN has offered money for floating cities and so I think I think financing this and funding it wouldn't be very difficult You know, I talk about, you know, it, it being an energy producing, floating, I mean, it, it looks like a cake tray, but, but really what it is, is it's a sea tower. It's a sea scraper, you know, and it can be as tall or as big as we want. I, if they can build these oil platforms and then you know float them into place I mean of course this is possible this is absolutely possible to do this there's no reason we can't focus government energy right we have to get Biden on board so that he changes the zoning laws so that we can live in these pods, right? This is like a tiny home, but much, much stronger. And it, you know, it doesn't need wheels. It gets around a lot of building code. So there's some hurdles around building inspectors. So it's going to need inspections at the factory. And there's going to be a lot of standards that are going to have to be figured out. But we could have grow containers, we could have greenhouse containers, we could have pool containers. Right? We can build little catamarans very, very cheap and sail around the world very securely. So there's, there's a lot of free energy that, you know, we don't really consider because, you know, we were told there's no such thing as free energy, but there's, there's better energy, right? There's ways to store energy. There's ways to capture energy, right? From the, from the tide to the wind to the sun. We just have to capture it. And there's a lot of ways to capture it. 
So these structures can collect solar all day and lift giant weights or just like a bag of water, you know, a giant, a giant balloon full of water and it slowly drops overnight and spins a generator. So we use elevation as a battery and we can do that with water as well, right? By raising water to a much higher elevation, it's a battery because we can recover a lot of that energy when it flows back down. So I, I think what's important is that we don't decide that it's not possible or it's a scam because it has to be developed and we have to create a whole market for it. People don't think in terms of pods. So, you know, we have to get people to think differently about their home. You know, like it should be modular, right? Where you have a kitchen, a bathroom, and all the mechanical electronics in one in one pod and then you can add as many rooms onto that you know but we have to be responsible for our own electricity and our own heat and you know we we have to live differently. We have to travel less, you know, and, and probably live online. You know, I think school is going to be better online because busing students, busing children all around town twice a day is, is an enormous amount of diesel. You know, these buses are tanks and it is a fortune to build these schools and they're not even necessary. They're not safe. Right? With school shootings and COVID, we're better off at home where our parents can decide what lessons we learn. And we can learn anything we want on, you know, Khan Academy or, you know, YouTube University. There is so much potential to develop online learning and make it much better than schooling. Schooling was a military operation a hundred years ago by the Ottomans and they created soldiers by waking them up early and marching them to school and and learning to work like a slave and and we don't need to do that that was just one person's idea of how we could be more profitable. And, and if we can refocus on how we can be productive and, you know, just do the next thing that needs to be done, we can all create an amazing future. And, and everything we need has been developed. We just need to put it together and change the policy. The policy is criminal. It really is. The policy and the zoning makes it impossible to use new materials and, you know, to live in a pod is illegal in California, right? This has to change. So I am calling on millennials to get this developed. And the faster we get it developed, the faster we have floating cities and, 
and we don't have to worry about climate change. And the banks can get stuck with all the stick-built homes that need constant maintenance. Maybe they can pay the taxes and maintain them for a while. We, we need to upgrade our living. And over the last hundred years, everything that fits in a shipping container has gotten cheaper. And not better necessarily, but mass produced and you know like an iPhone or an automobile it can improve every single year if the, if the money's there and and I think that the banks would love to finance this because it's a secure investment right it's not it doesn't really even need excellent credit you know they can just come and take it away if you don't pay the bill and like an iPhone we can upgrade you know every couple of years you can get the, the best new kitchen and you give or you sell your old kitchen you know imagine all of these old pods on eBay you know and for five or ten thousand dollars you can get a really nice pod to live in. This is the way. We have to consider this. And anybody who wants to build their own container home can can buy a recycled or can buy a container. They get decommissioned after 14 years. They're rusty, but you know, you take that corrugated steel off and you finish it and there's a thousand different possibilities and you can build your own because there'll be all kinds of parts available you know if we develop the solar roof and we develop the appliances and the mechanics and the glass and the windows and you know all of the interior trim then it gets cheaper for everybody else right and we can have luxury condos $200,000 container condo that's marble, right? Straight from China. Anything. Anything we can imagine. And so I really don't want people to say this isn't possible or that won't work. I want to know what will work, right? What can we do that will work, right? What do you think we can do different than what I'm, what I'm suggesting? You know, I, I'm, I'm really open to ideas and developing this concept, right? It's, it's a wild concept that, you know, people aren't really able to wrap their head around. But we could have an online store and you fill out your trim and you designed it online and it's delivered just like a Tesla. Right? So people working from home you know, we can have home offices that come completely wired and you drop them off and you're ready to work. So you might never need to sell your home and pack up and get a moving company because you can just bring it with you. You call a container shipping company that, you know, there's a lot already that exists that move containers every day, millions of them. So they know how to move containers very, very well. And so if we build these with just the four corners and 
steel tube so that we can just lift them up exactly like shipping containers. And if they're the same dimensions, they'll fit on any truck. So you don't have to subscribe or, you know, donate money, but share this idea with people who could do something about it, right? If, if you know somebody that works for Apple or works for Amazon or, you know, if there's some way that, you know, we can get more attention on this idea, then we can push Congress and Joe Biden to use this solution. Like, this is an infrastructure solution. And I have a whole bunch more infrastructure ideas that are, are really simple. They're really, really, really simple ideas, like bailing the grass along the highway and giving it to farms for their cattle. You know, we, we waste all of that grass. It could be bailed and, and given as a subsidy instead of money to farms. And then they wouldn't need as much land. And they could provide the land for the communes that we're gonna set up. And then people can work on the farm. Right, we can build little small communities in the desert. We can build little colonies on the water, right? You know, maybe there's tax incentives to being in international waters. I think, I think this is a better investment than going to Mars or even to the moon. This is a trillion dollar market. Somebody is going to do it. Who's going to do it? It has to be done. It doesn't matter to me who does it, but I know that it has to be done because there are million dollar homes that are only worth a hundred thousand dollars because they're on, you know, a nice piece of property. And that, that doesn't make any sense. That, that's a scam. There's plenty of land. Construction costs. Are ridiculous they're gonna be fixing the homes they have for forever so construction workers will never run out of roofs and driveways and siding and windows to repair they're not gonna you know lose their job to China they're gonna have cheap housing and even the poorest homeless people can have little communities and we can buy them little pods and let them rebuild their life. You know, it's, it's really fun, all the different ideas that people come up with. So... I want, I want people to tell me, you know, their own ideas about how to make this happen. You know, where do we start? But I know where it'll go, right? It'll go to the moon. Okay. It'll change how we live. And it'll reduce 
our impact on the environment more than anything else. You know, consider all the construction, traffic, and deliveries, and waste, dumpsters of waste. And it takes months and months, and you have architects, and you have building inspectors, and you have a foundation crew, and a, you know, you have a roofer, a cider. All of these people have to work together, and they never do. They're all blaming each other, okay? So, it has to be built like an automobile. And they can be as good as we want. Or they can be as cheap as we want. But they're certainly strong enough to have a green roof or stack, you know, 10 high, just like a shipping container would. You know, shipping containers are tossed around with 80,000 pounds of goods inside, you know, smashing around on the ocean in a hurricane. And they have to be watertight. So these things are almost indestructible. And there's no reason that we shouldn't be living in something that could withstand a tree. You know, I imagine a tree falling on my house. It would crush my house. But a container, it's not, it, it might dent it, you know, but nobody would be at risk. And they could be locked up, you know, much, much better than a house. You know, these containers are, are very easy to lock up. And as far as siding goes, it's just like a house. You know, we're going to use any kind of siding that you can put on a house. But there's a lot of possibilities we don't even consider, like hemp fiber walls, or clay, or materials from the building site, you know, rock, or, you know, we can buy fabric tarps that give the illusion of brick, and they can have solar panels sewn into them, and we can make them really efficient and really smart. And, you know, they can this can really change the future. And if you really want to change the future, I think this is the best way. You know, if capitalism doesn't come up with a solution to our housing problem, then it's no good, right? We need housing. We need a safe place to live. There's, there's, there's no substitute for a safe place to live. That is the most important, basic, fundamental thing we need. And family homes have been taken away by mortgages and banks and foreclosure, millions of them. So, you know, there's no such thing as a family home anymore. I, I think it would give people a lot of comfort to know that they have a home base and it's safe. And it's a, it could be a one-time thing where they buy it once and they just keep building on top of it. Right? You can keep stacking these containers just like Legos in an infinite number of ways. Let me give you some examples of how you could put them together.
So I would leave space in between so that you don't need as many. And you build a roof over it, hopefully glass, and it becomes a greenhouse. And there's so many building materials that we are missing out on because we don't have the, the contractors that know how to put it together. I mean, most contractors just know one or two ways to build a house. Well, it turns out there's a lot of ways to build a house. And we could build underground. We could build on the ocean. We can build in the mountains. I mean, you could have a Sikorsky helicopter drop one of these in an, in at the top of a mountain and and you could live off grid. You know, the government owns an enormous amount of land. We should be able to spread out safely and create as many different communities as we possibly can to withstand all of the change and corruption that is coming our way. There is an enormous amount of damage that we need to wake up to and fix. I mean, prices go up all the time. How often do prices go down? They just don't go down anymore. And the cost of wood and the cost of asphalt and the cost of putting oil in all of these products is enormous. So we need better building materials. And they're already developed. They're all being built in China and they're cheap. They're so cheap if we buy a hundred thousand or a million and they'll deliver them in 30 days. I don't want to hear about all the hurdles and it's not going to work. I want to hear solutions. I want to hear how we can create communities like this. This is what we should be building, right? A neighborhood, a neighborhood garden. Instead of going to school, we can learn how to garden. And we can learn anything we want. But if we rely on the government, they're going to lie to us. And they're going to enslave us. And they're going to give us the worst products because they're the most profitable. They're going to protect profits. They're going to protect corporations. And so we're going to have to fight to get this approved and I know it's possible because the free market can't resist new markets and this is a gold mine this is a gold mine. You know, I I imagine skyscrapers in the city would just be five hundred 
container condos. And they could be as luxury and cozy and fabulous as we want. We could build this for $100,000. A six bedroom, 4,000 square foot container home. We're not building very smart. Our heating systems, our cooling systems, the air quality in our homes is not good. You know, they can say it's as efficient as they want, but it's not. It wastes propane, it wastes oil. A lot of these homes could be passive cooling and passive heating. There's so many possibilities. You know, we... We accept whatever they give us, and what they give us is a $100,000 stick-built home that could burn down or collapse tomorrow, and it cost a million dollars. That's not right. We don't need to buy those. There'll always be people who want an old-fashioned house. But this new style of living just has too much potential. to heat my home I have a wood stove and I go through about two cords per winter that's just one tree or it or I go through about $2,500 worth of propane that's a big difference $500 or $2,500 and the propane is not that clean it's not that efficient it's not that sustainable. We don't even need to take it out of the ground. We have all the energy we need. We're just not smart about capturing it. We're swimming in an ocean of energy. So I think any 16 year old kid in his parents backyard could build this and take it with him to college, and then take it with him to his job, and then get married, and add as many bedrooms, and upgrade his house, and move it as many times as he needs. So there's a lot of middlemen who might be worried that they're going to get canceled. But I assure you that all the houses that we've built are going to need fixing for the next hundred years, nonstop. None of them are built to last more than 30 years. Everything needs to be replaced every 30 years. So I think it would be better to just start fresh with something that could be designed for 50 or 100 years, made of you know, resin or heavy duty plastic, and it could be watertight, airtight, 
and and protect people from global warming. You know, it could be fireproof. It could be it could be flood proof. It could be financed. I think that's huge. It could be leased. Right? I mean, that's that's a big deal. A lot of people don't have the money for a house. I think we can build these. If we, if we build a million of these, I bet they'll be only $10,000 a piece. We'll probably have one delivered for $10,000. And then finish it yourself. <laughs> 